Hey guys, uh, so this is going to be um, my first video uh, talking about um, parts of needle felting. So um, I've been thinking instead of doing a tutorial on how to make a single item um, like for instance like rather than showing you and I'm just holding up something random that I have it uh, off to the side of me right now like instead of showing you how to make a single needle felting um, object I thought I would instead split um, video my videos into short lessons regarding aspects of needle felting um, because rather than when I started out needle felting, I had a lot of questions. I watched a lot of tutorials like uh, Flying Neo's videos and uh, Macaroon's videos on needle felting and how to start needle felting and all that, but there was still a lot of different aspects, different pros and cons um, as to how to find materials, where to find them, which is better, um, and different techniques. So for this video, which is going to be part one of a series of small videos um, regarding aspects of needle felting, which I think is more helpful, it's kind of like an FAQ as to uh, what you use, what you like, and things like that. So this is part one, and this is just going to cover materials of needle felting. and. Um, I guess like the necess necessities of needle felting. So in needle felting you only need three three equipment essentially or three materials. The first one being that I have on screen right now is um, the needle felting needle and you've seen this probably already in all the needle felting tutorials and videos these are just it's a barbed needle um, with a handle and if you can see, and I'm sorry for the poor lighting because it's nighttime and I'm filming in my room and I don't really have appropriate lighting, but um, you've probably seen this already. So these, um, are, it's just barbed needle. It's just a barbed needle made specifically for needle felting. And there you go, you can see it right there. Um, it's attached to a handle. It's kind of flimsy, as you can see right here. This attachment is very, very small, very weak. Um, and it's very pointy. It's, I would want to say it's even pointier than a sewing needle and it really hurts when you stab yourself with it. Um, I've only ever seen one person who said that it did not hurt when they got stabbed and I'm like, you're a liar? <laughs> that it, it hurts. It hurts a lot. So um, you always want to take precautions. You always want to pay attention when you are needle felting. Um, where the direction of where you're stabbing and um, and you always want to stab in an upwards and downwards um, and never at a curved angle or anything like that because then you're at risk of breaking the needle. Now these needles are very cheap. They typically, you can find them um, in craft stores. So at Hobby Lobby, I found a pack of five or seven for about like four or five dollars. Um, all of these and a lot of the materials that you'll see um, in this video is going to be materials that I bought from Daiso because I have a Daiso right around the corner for me. So I'm really lucky that I can find all these great crafting materials for a really low price. So. Um, yeah, all these materials, um, this handle for instance, and needle felting needles, they do come in singles, um, which I was holding for, and this um, as the handle. And the handle, this is just a double. I've seen um, ones with like a triple needle with a handle. And yeah, this one I got at Daiso for $1.50. Everything's $1.50. And I bought, um, they also had a pack, a four pack of single needles for $1.50 as well, but I haven't seen it recently. I've only seen like um, two packs uh, or like two needles for $1.50, which I think is kind of expensive when I know before they sold four for $1.50. So yeah. And this right here, um, I wrapped around with two rubber bands because if you've needle felted before and um, it, it kind of hurts like your thumb area right here. Um, 
so it, just to help with that um, you can make the handle a little bit thicker by like I did right here um, wrapping it with rubber bands so that there's something rubbery to hold on or maybe with tape I've seen people who um, used polymer clay and baked it so that they had like a thick handle to hold on while they are needle felting so yeah um, I think I covered it I have a little outline right here yeah so yeah so first the next material um, that you'll need is a needle felting pad or mat, however you call it, you need a work surface. So you've seen it a lot before, you've seen um, maybe in other videos like this really nice high density pad. This, um, this is uh, specifically made uh, branded for needle felting and I got this at Hobby Lobby, it's um, the Dimensions brand. It's a high density needle felting foam and if I can compare it with anything, it's similar to the consistency of what you would find in the lining of um, camera instruments or like musical instruments, like that foam padding that's really, really dense. And I've had it for about a month and a half now and I mostly just needle felted on one side and um, you may have noticed like this side is actually I've needle felted a little bit on this side um, it's still it's nice and dense um, but there's still it's, it's not foolproof I mean if you needle felt as much as I do you may see um, that does pick up uh, strands of the wool and um, the more vigorously you needle felt on it um, you start noticing bits and pieces of the foam um, detaching as you need a fault and they um, so they they come off of the pad and they transfer onto the wool and um, yeah that's that's kind of a bummer um, I bought this for uh, at Hobby Lobby $8.99 but I had a 40% off coupon so it was only like five dollars or something like that so yeah um, it's still really good. I would prefer this over some of the other options. And let me just show you some of the other options. Um, so I told you the con, it does chip off, the foam does chip off, and it, it can transfer over onto your wool in little specks, but you can always pick that off. It's not that big of a deal. Um, you can get a piece of cloth or linen and spread over it and needle felt it on that. So you can get like, let's say like this, this felt pad, you can just put that over that and then start needle felting. You just need a nice uh, cushiony, thick work surface. That's all you essentially need. So you can get a piece of cloth, cover that, and then you have a work surface that way. And that's what I have been doing um, just so that to just to prevent from having to uh, have the little specks of dust on my wool. Um, I don't want to use the side too much just yet because yeah, I want to preserve this as much as I can and I've only had it for a month and a half so yeah, but it's still working pretty well. I prefer it over some of the other options like I said and the other options that you have are um, the sponge, the kitchen sponge and um, you can see right here, yeah, this is really, really um, bad. <laughs> so this I took to um, pieces of sponge and they were just way too thin just on their own so I folded them in half, sewed them together so that there was more of a thickness to them and I used this sponge uh, mostly to needle felt polyester fiber fill and I will cover that in my second video but essentially I used this as a throwaway pad um, things that I would needle felt very vigorously and roughly um, as you can see right here, I would use this preferably rather than my more expensive pad because I don't want to ruin it. So there is the pro to using the kitchen sponge, that if you have more vigorous needle felting projects, um, I would use this to start off with and then do the fine touches with that, um, with the more expensive foam. However, um, if you don't have the budget to buy the more expensive needle felting pad then the kitchen sponge by itself is perfectly fine. Like the more expensive pad, um, you can imagine that a regular kitchen sponge would be, um, it, it would 
disintegrate a lot faster as you're needle felting it. Um, I had a sponge that had, you know, like um, the spongy part and the bottom bottom side of the sponge had the rough part when you're washing dishes. So I noticed when I used those kinds of sponges, the bottom part with the rough end, um, it would start chipping off. So it would create like a layer of dust on my desk as I'm needle felting and I did not like that. Um, and because the kitchen sponge is not as dense as the needle felting pad, it will uh, come off, disintegrate a lot faster than the needle felting pad. But, you know, for a dollar you can get a five pack of kitchen sponges, so it'll last you quite a while. Um, you can just consistently just replace it, and once it gets old and ratty, you can just, you know, use it in the kitchen. Um, yeah, on your dishes. So your next option is something I don't have actually, but I always I didn't think it was a good option for me. Um, is the felt brush pad, and it's it's like a really big brush, like um, that has like uh, acrylic bristles. So it's just like um, one of those kitchen brushes that you may, may see, but it's very large. It's um, maybe the size of this, and you need essentially felt on the bristle part but I always thought usually when I'm needle felting and for example I'll just hold my penguin, Christmas penguin right here when I'm needle felting I pr hold down my project or my um, craft onto the pad and as I am needle felting with my needle felting tool I press down and usually it creates a dent kind of like this right here so like when I'm needle felting sometimes I go all the way through the um, project or the craft into the sponge itself and I am really going at it so um, it creates a dent and I just thought a brush would probably just exacerbate, exacerbate that um, I'll probably displace bristles and I thought you know those br um, felt brushes they cost as much as the high density foam, maybe a little bit cheaper, but uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it. So I didn't just, I, I didn't like the way it looked. Um, and the other option that you have is um, one that I have that I got at Daiso. You've probably seen it before in, in maybe somebody else's video, but this is essentially a styrofoam board. Um, yeah, so this I got at Daiso comes with the needle felt, uh, needle felting needle, and it recommends that as your since it's not very thick, not as thick as the um, high density foam, um, it recommends having some sort of like maybe thick like magazines or something like that underneath the pad while you are needle felting on it. And I've only used it once before, and I put it back in its packaging. But yeah, I've only used it once before, and it's just this just styrofoam pad. And this is the smooth side, this is the rough side. You can use either side. I've only used it maybe like uh, just like a few pokes just to test it out and it seems to work okay. Um, but in the packaging, I was reading the uh, fine print and it says that um, how to use, yeah, you can use both sides uh, of the mat and if dents, uh, dents will appear and wool will be caught into the surface and re after repeated use. And if this happens, they recommend you replacing it. And I'm like, mm, well, of course they want you to replace it. They want to make money and <laughs> have you buy more. So, yeah, just like the other needle faulting pads, essentially they will, the more you use it, the m more quickly it will um, disintegrate, essentially. Uh, it's not going to be nice and clean. It's not something that you can have for a very long period of time. So, yeah, I have like these three to hold me over, and so far, it seems um, this one is, has been serving me very well, and also the kitchen sponge as well has been serving me very well. So that's probably going to be the main two that I um, will be using for my needle felting crafts. And now the last necessity, the last thing that you need when you're needle felting is of course the wool. The wool. So um, there it are, let's see, the wool itself is just essentially wool that is um, 
it could be anything really. Um, you could use anything that essentially has fibers to it. So you could use, technically you could use acrylic yarn uh, or any kind of yarn because it is fibrous. So um, I've seen people do this technique called carding where you essentially have these um, metal bristle combs and you essentially just take the comb, um, two, of, two of them, and you have some of the yarn get caught um, onto the bristles and you just start essentially combing out the bristles until it's soft and fuzzy and you've unraveled the yarn into workable um, needle felting wool essentially. Um, so there's that. You can get it, um, the wool in its uh, raw form which people have uh, dyed and um, manufactured and things like that. So I have uh, essentially three samples right here of three different stores that I have bought. Um, these are, yeah, I've used them all in my crafting before and let me just give you the pros and cons, the prices and all of that. So for, of course you've probably seen this a lot in the tutorials. This is um, a kit from Daiso and um, you get some of these packets they come with either three to four different colors um, and they sometimes give you a sample of the picture that they can um, that you can make so this right here it looks like I'm a little baby or matroshka Russian doll or something like that so um, this wool, let me get it out of its packaging, um, is made of long strands and when I needle felt, typically I like to use um, wool that is short strands. So let me just pull it out right here and what I meant, mean by long strands is you can see um, the strands themselves is just one long strand. I mean you could tear it off and how you would tear it is you would hold it um, more at a distance from the end and you pull pull it off like that and it comes off easily. However, if you hold closer to the end, you're not going to be able to pull off anything. Um, so needle faulting with long strands, there's a tendency of, especially with Daiso wool, um, I haven't tried it with any other like other kinds of uh, wool yet, but with Daiso wool, um, it tends to have, as you're needle felting it, a lot of these like extra strands or fuzzies, like I, I like to call them, um, off the surface, and you know you can just snip them off, and that's perfectly fine. It's, but it does not give, especially with um, Daiso wool, it kind of gives this rough edge uh, or surface to it that I don't particularly like. However, um, you know it's 20 grams, 20 grams in a packet. You get three to four colors. Um, so that's about four to five grams per color at four dollar fifty, and so it's steel for it's, it's steel, and you get like a lot of variety of colors. Um, so that's why I use it. I don't, I don't prefer it. It, it, it is good for what it is. It really is. But I've worked with other wool, uh, not a lot of wool, um, different kinds of wool, but I've worked with. Um, what I'm going to talk about next and I like it. I prefer it a lot more and this um, is the wool that you've seen uh, probably a lot in Flying Neo and um, Macaroons videos, YouTube videos and tutorials. Um, this is the wool uh, from Handcrafter. Um, they have an Etsy shop and the wool that I bought specifically and with Handcrafter they have all kinds of wool. They have the curly wool um, they have uh, mer high quality merino wool um, that's long strands um, and this I what I bought because essentially it was the cheapest and um, but it needle felt so well um, this is short strands and you may not be able to see it very well but it it tears off really easily so that's just a clump that I pulled off earlier but um, you know it just pull it off so easily so yeah they're short strands um, and when you needle felt them it is it's super soft it's so soft and um, when I needle felt with it it treats a lot more of a smooth kind of texture so let me give you an example right here so I've used different parts 
of this penguin using different kinds of wool. The cap, the white and red, um, are is wool that I bought off of Handcrafter, um, and it has a lot more of a smooth texture. So does you can't probably can't see it because it's black, but um, let's see. So I've used Daiso wool for the yellow and the gray, and. It's, if you notice, it's not as smooth as the red cap. It's not as fuzzy, um, or it's not as smooth or and soft feeling. Um, it still looks nice though. And the end product, if you just if you know how to manipulate the wool well, it still looks perfectly fine and comparable to the short strand um, wool. This packet is 10 grams. Um, and it's a dollar fifty, so it uh, it's it's pretty cheap comparatively to other uh, shops, needle felting shops, that charge their wool. They, you probably get a larger quantity. I don't know, but usually it's like five dollars for a, a single color, and so I find it really expensive. So yeah, like I really really like Handcrafters wool, and you get a good amount, ten grams. It doesn't look like much. It's a small packet, but if you make a lot of smaller things, it will last you quite a while. The last wool that I'm going to be talking about is the one that I bought from Hobby Lobby. So this wool um, is super coarse. It's short, fibrous strands, so it pulls off really easily. And as you can probably see in the package, it is very coarse. Um, it needle felts very fast, but it doesn't feel as nice as um, Handcrafter's wool. Um, I bought this, I think, per packet. Uh, packet. It was a dollar, one dollar and fifty nine cents per packet, and it was 0.5 ounces, so that's approximately fourteen grams. So that's still a lot of wool for a dollar fifty nine. Um, but I don't think I would be using it on a majority of my needle felting crafts. I only bought this because I really like this color green and I don't think I would be buying any more because I think um, Hobby Lobby's selection of colors from this brand and I think this brand is called Artiste. Um, yeah, they don't have a, a wide selection of colors and they don't have a wide selection of colors that are in pastel colors, so yeah. But I really like this color, so I bought that. So, to recap, um, if given the choice, I would buy, or if I had the choice of and like all the money in the world, I would be buying a lot more of Handcrafters wool. Um, I would like to try their other brands. Other, they have like the long strands and the curly strands. I I did buy like the curly wool but I haven't tried it yet um, but yeah I've bought from their store like about four times already so I l really love their wool however it just it, it doesn't make sense not to buy um, perfectly good wool from Daiso um, it's a dollar fifty for all this wool and it's, it's 20 grams so it's double the amount of this and you get four different colors um, three to four different colors so yeah I'd be stupid not to buy any wool from there and it's perfectly good wool if you just know how to manip manipulate it um, this wool perfectly fine from Hobby Lobby um, like I said it's super coarse but it needle felts very fast so it's it holds its shape very well um, yeah but just not a lot of selection of colors from this brand so yeah I, I don't think I would be buying from them all that often. So that um, concludes my first video on uh, everything that I know about needle felting anyway. Um, the next video is going to be about um, core, core of the core of a needle felting project. Um, so I hope you look forward to that and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!